So let's see if this thing's gonna come out, starting gently at first. Oh yeah, it's moving. Yeah, this is working. There it is. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> oh man. Oh, look how wet it is inside. No wonder this thing is rusted. All right, my torsion bar is compromised. I can't use this. Now you might be saying, hey, you know, uh, why does that totally destroy it? It looks like it's in pretty good shape to me. And the answer is, is because this is a spring and it twists and the torsion actually rides along the surface layer of the uh, the bar. Uh, I can't get into the exact sciences of it because I really don't know beyond that. In fact, you know what? Somebody painted this. This is not the original Volkswagen plastic coating that was on these. See, this is a beetle bar. This has a thick plastic coating. This is paint. This is the same color as the body. Somebody had these out and repainted them. Well, anyway, that's not going to cut it. Anyway, the torsion rides along the surface, so when this twists, if there's a little mark, even just the smallest scratch or a spot of rust, what'll happen is it'll crack and it'll fail. And you know exactly the way it's going to go down. One morning you're going to find out that uh, your wife just found out about your girlfriend. Your kid's getting bad grades. Your dog just died. And the worst, to top it off, you're running late for work. You're driving down the road and you hit that big pothole and this damn torsion bar with that little rusty mark is going to fail on you. That's exactly the way it's going to go down. You, I mean, you know. You just know that's exactly the way it's going to be. So anyway, yeah, i got to get a new set of these. Uh, thankfully, they're not too expensive. I think on eBay I could pick up a set for about 100 bucks. Aftermarket ones are about $300. Um, the problem with the early bus ones is they're a little hard to find. Um, dimensions of. It looks like we got uh, 23 and a quarter inch long and I don't know what the diameter of it is I'll have to get my calipers out but I'm gonna speculate it's probably about 30 millimeters that's very very likely you can see the hole I drill in the end there and I tapped it out and ran that bolt in there it did a pretty good job a little off-center but even Volkswagen puts their hole off-center so <laughs> I don't feel so bad and no the beetle bar won't work uh, a couple reasons why one, uh, one of the ends actually has the same splines as the bus bar, but the opposite end is completely different. Secondly, the length is different, as you can see. The uh, bus one is, beetle one is going to be much longer. This is actually from a late beetle, and the reason why they made them longer is to make the, uh, the spring a little softer and give it an easier ride, less harsh. That's why they put that long tube on the end of the spring plate on this end. Um, in addition to that, the diameter of it is also way too small. It's going to cause it to twist the bar too far, and it might just fail from just being over-torqued. Yeah, I'm in the market for some new torsion bars. I'm going to see if I can get me a set sometime this week. In fact, I might even just go inside and turn in for the day because there's not a whole lot more that I can do. I was planning to start modifying the spring plates right away, but it looks like I'm, uh, I'm toast. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Here's our spring plates. This is from a late model Beetle. This is that tube I was mentioning. The long torsion bar goes all the way into the end here where it engages into the splines. And again, the longer torsion bar was to give you a better ride. But on the earlier Volkswagens, they use a shorter, shorter torsion bar, which is the reason why this is so short. Now you can see it's a little bent from me tweaking it trying to get the damn thing removed, but I think I can fix that. But what I need to do is I need to turn this spring plate into this. So I have to get these lined up, cut it off, cut out the slots, and then, because I'm narrowing the rear end, I will probably have to cut out this in here and um, reposition it probably about, oh, I think up to an inch and a half in one direction. That is yet to be determined. I don't know how far I'm going to go yet. I don't know where we're going to stop. So there's a little bit of... Um, tweaking and playing with that I'm going to have to do here before I can finalize everything. And of course I can't do any of that until I have a brand new set of torsion bars because the ones that were on there were obviously crap. <laughs> Lots to think about, but at least now that, that torsion bar and the spring plate is off.
Well, it looks like I cut just a little bit too deep. Um, I only wanted to go for about two inches. And that, well, it's nice that that came out that easy. But this is part of the uh, internal tube that holds the uh, end casting on, which is this guy, to the actual pipe that is the torsion tube. So this is the piece that uh, is inserted between them and then the weld goes all the way around. And you can see that weld right about here. You can see some of the lumpy spots. So that's where that weld would normally go. That's about how much of this we're gonna cut off. But the inner tube that's in here, which is that diameter, we're going to try not to cut into. Now, from my understanding, if I manage to drill out the welds around this, um, I can cut that off and it'll slide off. Hopefully as easily as this thing came out of there. But, <laughs> I guess we'll see. And inside of here, look at all this. This is just, just rust. This is the reason why my torsion bar was all rusty. Just disgusting. Well, anyway, when I get the other side all apart, I'm actually going to rinse through this with some water and then I'm gonna spray up some uh, some oil to chase it and just try to get as much of this dirt and stuff out as possible. I'm wondering how it got into it, uh, if it was just on the ends or if there's actually a hole somewhere up on top. So I'm gonna have to um, actually examine this a little more closely up underneath the suspension here and uh, see what else I can find. We're gonna bring this inside to the bench and we're gonna take off about an inch and a half. Well, it turns out uh, there wasn't six welds, there was seven. So I got them cut out with the hole saw. And we're going to wrap around a piece of tape here to mark a one inch line. Now I plan on taking off an inch and a half. Because I cut this back so far, what's going to happen here as I cut this is it's, um, it's going to cut back into the weld. And the weld is much harder. And I don't want to um, have to cut into that at all. Damn that dog. Seems like everybody gets a new dog in this neighborhood and they never take care of the damn thing and they bark all day and night long. And I'm sure they bitch at me too for running power tools all the damn time so I don't say anything but it doesn't mean I'm happy about it. Now the goal here is not to cut through both layers, I forgot to mention that. You just want to cut through the outer so this ring comes off. The inner tube that's in here we want to leave because we're going to slide that into the tube that's on the uh, bus still. So that way everything will be nicely aligned and then we can run our welds all the way around it. Yeah, we got the saws already. We got a little bit of lubricant for the blade. Let's go ahead and uh, start chopping. You can see that uh, while I was over here between um, recording, I tapped on it with a hammer like this, and it's caused gaps to open up around it. I think it's ready to come off because the uh, line where I sawed it is open wider than it was just from me beating on it. But it's not sliding off on its own. Huh, maybe I should try a little bit of um, penetrating oil. <laughs> Since I have this much of an opening already, and the fact that it's starting to 
to move on its own. I wonder if the capillary action will uh, pull it in. <laughs> I've got my doubts, but what the hell. It's worth a try for fluid film. It, give it a few seconds to soak through. This is an old screwdriver, by the way. It's one that's in pretty bad shape and it wasn't expensive, so I really don't care. But we're gonna kind of drive it in there like a wedge. Well, it's moving. Not much, but. Yeah, it's moving. Everybody had told me it would just slide off, but if I still have a stray weld somewhere, and it looks like there's one right here. Yeah, I think we got one right there. Looks like the uh, hole saw didn't quite get all of it. No doubt, a stray weld right here. I'll grind the rest of that off. Let's see if this thing will continue coming off now. That wasn't so bad that it split open. I think we got one more portion of a weld. Oh, never mind. There was a little bit of weld left on the back side of it and it just broke off. All right, there's our piece, and uh, no, there was no stray weld on the back side. I guess just when I used the hole saw on it, it uh, caused the metal just to expand into the hole. Let's grind that off, and then we'll go size it up on the bus. All right, there's my end casting. The next time I do the other side, I'm going to do this quite differently. Now that I've had one down, I've uh, got a little learning experience here. But it still has the tube left on it, which means it should slot right into that hole. Now, I'm not putting it on at the right angle, just so we can see. And yeah, it does slot right into that hole with no problem. Now, you see I've got that marking for the blue tape. I'm going to cut off another half of an inch here. And the goal is to get the um, torsion tube here even with the side of the body. So that way I could run a straight edge up and down this and not have a gap. So I'm going to close that up. I don't want to go over any further than that. That's shooting the rear end about an inch and a half. It might be just a hair more than that, but uh, whatever we wind up with, I've got the ability to be flexible and play with from there when we install the IRS rear suspension. Anyway, we're going to pull that out, cut that off, and then we're going to line everything up and take our last measurements before we start putting a welder on it. All right, there it is. And yeah, we are right about a half of an inch. All right, we're gonna rip that last piece out of there. There's our seam. It's uh, well, less than an eighth of an inch, which is good. That means I can get the weld in there and I can get the two outer pieces and the inside tube all welded together by running a, a bead right through that gap. That is great. And on the outside, look at that. We are perfectly flush. Yes. Two by four is not straight. <laughs> in fact, this isn't straight either. But anyway, you guys get the drift. Right here, at that edge, it is flush. So that's where we wanted it to be. I am happy with that. Unfortunately, I got called to a service call, so I'm not going to finish this right this minute. But that probably won't matter to you by the time you guys are seeing this video. This will all be done anyway. <laughs> well, I just wanted to see what everything was going to look like, so I just quickly dry fit everything together. That's actually a beetle spring plate. That won't be going on here, but it just demonstrate the uh, correct length. Um, I shoved the torsion 
bar in there too. Of course, it didn't engage with the splines on the inside, but it did on the outside, and uh, it bottomed out. So damn it, that that length is exactly correct uh, for a beetle <laughs> for a beetle torsion bar. Now I suppose if I really wanted to go nuts, I could cut the center out of the torsion tube and replace it with a beetle center, and I have one from Eleanor. And then what I could do is put in some uh, 944 torsion bars, which are the same thickness, well, some of the uh, the racing ones, or even the, the late model Beetle ones, um, that have the same diameter as the bus. And I could run a long torsion bar in it instead and use that spring plate unmodified. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. The uh, spring plate is the same thickness as a bus one. It's really not that much of a difference. And most people usually wind up cutting a big triangle out of it anyway to make sure that it clears up here so uh, you can lower the piss out of them. I don't know, that's something to think about. To have a longer torsion bar on there would also mean it would give you a better ride. It would have the same spring rate, but it would just be softer, I suppose is the best way to put it, because you've got more spring to twist. So, yeah, something to think about. I don't know. I probably won't do it. We'll see. But the reason why I did this is I wanted to measure how much behind the fender that is, so I know uh, kind of an idea as to what kind of wheels I could put on here. That's been a little bit of the uh, the problem, a little bit of the uh, afterthought that I've been having here, because I know that the IRS is going to push this out. I know that the Porsche brakes is going to push it out again even further. So in order for me to make all this fit, um, yeah, I had to narrow the rear torsion bar. It was absolutely necessary. There was no other way to, to make this fit and fit properly. Otherwise, I was going to have to put some really, really skinny wheels on here that had a, uh, a huge backspacing to make sure that they fit behind the fender. And looking at some of the wheels that I wanted to put on here, it's just none of that was going to work for me. So, All right, I attached a level to the side of the bus. Get down below here, just in case you're curious. Right off of the rear drive hub. We're looking at exactly five and a quarter inches. So we got plenty of space. We're gonna lose maybe a quarter of an inch, uh, probably not quite a quarter of an inch when we put the disc over the top of this too, so it'll push the wheel out a little bit more. But five and a quarter inch is a lot of space. I think that's gonna work real nicely. I think we got something good going on here. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up for the day. Linky, likey, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. We'll see you next time.